Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Sneha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs class. I hope all of you are aware of the live courses for RDI Sabi and NABAD that we have launched and about the crash course for NABAD grade. If you want to know more about the courses or about the new updates or related to the examination or daily GK quizzes, anything, everything is available on our application. So download it and make the process happy for all of you. Okay, so here we have the first question of the day. Which institute has launched the Center for Climate Studies to focus on climate leadership, internationalization and management for policy advancement, technology and enterprise? So here, the right answer is IAM Postcode. Now from the very name itself, the Center for Climate Studies, the purpose of this Center of Excellence would be to inculcate uh, or basically uh, create awareness about the climate and uh, promulgate you can say the climate studies in India. So that is the basic idea and it will focus on climate leadership, internationalization that is collaborating on climate change with other countries so that the risk can be mitigated. Then the management for policy advancement so and technology and enterprise. So these are the focus areas on which this center uh, for climate studies will focus on okay so this is the full form of climate itself leadership internationalization management technology and enterprise these are the five fingers you can say of this center of climate uh, studies so in this manner you can remember this uh, entire full form in an easier manner moving ahead Apart from that center of climate studies, IAM Posi Code was also in the news because it has uh, partnered with Cochin Shipyard Limited for boosting the startups in the maritime sector. And how will they incubate or uh, boost the startup culture in the maritime sector? By incubating them through their laboratory for innovation, that venturing and entrepreneurship. So this is a joint business incubator of IAM Kosi Kode and Kochi Shipyard Limited and this again is a very important question for you in the examination. So do remember IAM Kosi Kode, Kochi Shipyard Limited and this laboratory for innovation, lecturing and entrepreneurship. These are the three keywords from this news that you have to remember from this state. Okay, now we are talking about the IAM Kosi Kode. We all know Jawaharlal Nehru was the first Prime Minister who laid down the foundation for the IAMs and IITs. Can any one of you tell me that in which year was the first IAM established and where was it established? These are your questions. Do tell me in the comment section. So this is guys the location of IAM Kosi Kode and this is the campus. So very beautiful campus it is. So I just wanted to show you, I hope that this helps you in remembering the state in which the uh, code is and the news associated with it, okay? And you can easily associate the news of maritime sector with IEM Kozikode because of its location it is near the coast, okay? So it has very much relevance in the maritime sector. Moving ahead, uh, the next question is, which state has the highest number of discounts in the top 10 list of integrated rating of power distribution utilities. So this new ranking has been released by the government of India and according to this ranking, Gujarat has the highest number of discounts in the top 10 list. Now I am telling you the details of this news. First of all, Ministry of Power has released this ranking and not Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, okay? Clearly remember, it is Ministry of Power. Now, what is the purpose of this rating? So, clearly from the name itself, power distribution utilities or the companies are the focus of this list or these rankings and rankings are obviously done to check the performance. Okay, so the performance of the power distribution companies in India is checked by this list and this is the 10th edition of this list. So, how many companies? 71 discount companies were evaluated on a uh, Financial sustainability, performance excellence, external environment, and their ability to sustain improvement year on year. 
we all know that the discount sector of india is facing a crisis because it is not able to generate revenues and it has to supply the power and because it is not able to generate enough revenues it is not able to pay back to the gen electricity generating companies and thus this entire loop of losses has been created in the electricity sector and in order to cater to this or mitigate the crisis Uday scheme, Uday scheme was launched guys Uday scheme i constantly uh, tell you about this scheme because this is one of the flagship schemes of the government and you can expect the question from this so do cover this scheme thoroughly from your government schemes document okay so let's move ahead in this ranking itself first of all you need to know that this ranking has been released since 2012 and this is the 10th edition of this week. Now, as far as the rankings are concerned, so in the top 10, 6 are the government companies, 6 are the government discounts and 6 are the priorities. So, among the 6 government discounts, Gujarat has the highest number of discount companies in the top 10 list. Uh, actually the top 12 list and in the private segment again Gujarat has the highest number of companies okay so combining both Gujarat stands at the first position as far as the discounts performance is concerned in this list so let's have a look 12 discounts have achieved the A plus grade and these 12 are divided into 6, six straight line utilities from the six straight run discount company Gujarat has four. Then the other one, Nagar Valley has one, Punjab has one. And out of the six private utilities, Gujarat has two, Maharashtra has two, so we have Gujarat and Maharashtra. Both these states have the highest number of utilities. Then Uttar Pradesh one and West Bengal one. Okay. So I hope that it is easy for you to remember. So guys, this is the list of the power distribution companies. Now it would be there in your mind that whether you have to remember the companies also. So here let me tell you, first company, if you have to base it, it's very good because the top company is going to be and as far as the states are concerned, I have already told you that Gujarat has the highest number of utility, utilities in this top 12 list as far as the state-run utilities are concerned and as far as the private companies are concerned, Gujarat and Maharashtra both have uh, top. Okay? So that much information is enough from this report. Uh, don't, you don't need to remember all the rankings of all these companies. Okay? Just remember that there are 12 companies in the A plus grade. The next question is, when was the national offshore wind energy policy launched? So here guys, the right answer is 2015. The wind energy, offshore wind energy policy was launched in 2015. Now, exactly why are we discussing this news? So it was there in the news that the government of India is planning to launch the PLI scheme for the offshore wind energy. Offshore wind energy uh, plants are those plants which are located within the sea itself. Okay? They are not located on the coast or on the land. So, right now it is just in the planning stage. Today itself I read in the newspaper that Prime Minister is going to launch three health schemes on Independence Day. But why did I not cover that or uh, discuss here? Because right now uh, the schemes have not been launched. Therefore, we do not need to go into too much of it. Then. Same is the case with this PLI scheme for the with offshore wind sector. But the associated facts related to this news that can be asked in the examination are wrong. Now what are those facts? First of all, what is India's target in relation to the offshore wind uh, energy? So India's target is to achieve 3, uh, sorry, 30 gigawatt of offshore wind energy capacity by 2030. And this national offshore wind energy policy which was launched in 2015 also states that by 2030, 30 gigawatts will be achieved and the target for 2022 was 5 gigawatts. Okay? 
So these are the targets by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. So here remember, it is the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which is again uh, administering this national offshore wind energy policy. Now coming to the coastline of India, it is 7,600 kilometers long. We know that this much is the peninsula of India, but still we do not have any offshore uh, plant operating as of now, whereas we have our legs in all the three oceans. But still, this is the, uh, you, we can say, untapped area. And here we need to tap the potential. The next question is, for the first time, a U.S. ship named USNS Charles Grew has arrived at Kattupalli ship, uh, shipyard for undertaking repairs and allied services. Which Indian company is responsible for undertaking the repair work? So here LNP guys at the right hand. Now this is for the first time that a US ship has arrived at the Kathupali shipyard and LNP is going to provide the service to this shipyard. Now guys, world's largest ship recycling port. Where is it located? Do tell me in the comment section below because ship recycling. Now here we are talking about repair, of course, but recycling is also one of the, you can say, booming sectors in the maritime uh, area. At the same time, recycling holds a very, uh, you can say, dangerous, uh, recycling has very dangerous impacts if it is not done sustainably. Okay, in order to do that sustainably, we have developed uh, the recycling policy as well, ship recycling policy and the world's largest ship recycling port is also in it. Now where is it? That is your question. I have made the question very easy for you now. So do tell me. Moving ahead. What is the name of the new initiative launched by Google for commemorating the 75th anniversary of India? So it is India Ki Now guys, in this India Ki what is going to happen? Google is going to provide the, uh, basically, uh, the information about the 75 years of India, okay? Uh, through its visuals, through its archived images, Google is going to provide the in, uh, information about the 75 glorious years of India and this is a gesture from the company itself, okay? Now, Google has also announced Google for Google contest and this contest is for the students of classes first to 10th and the theme of this contest is going to be in the next 25 years my india will okay you all know that uh, we had the azadi ka amrit mahotsav and in the next 25 years we are going to have the amrit ka okay to change the face of the nation we are going to celebrate the amrit ka Celebration to kya hi karenge? Isko ye basically ek term de diya gaya hai. Aage aane wale 25 saalon ke liye. Thik hai? Jisme jitne bhi aapke development projects honge, unka basic aim yehi hoga ki India ka face change kar diya. Okay? That is the basic idea. I hope all of you are aware of this Amrit Ka, the coming 25 years in which the all kinds of development projects will be launched in India and those development projects will aim to change the face of the economy. Or uh, will aim to develop the social economic area or the direction. Okay. Now the prize money. Five lakh college scholarship for the rupees. Five lakh college scholarship. Rupees two lakh technology package for the school or the non-profit organization. A recognition achievement. Uh, recognition certificate of achievement. Google hardware and fund Google collectibles. Not very important, but the prize money of the college scholarship and technology package for the school or the engine is important for you to know. And very specifically, a date has been chosen for the announcement of winners. That is the November, November 14, the Children's Day. So on this day, the, uh, the artwork of the children will be displayed on Google. Okay? The next question is, which bank has partnered with the new street technologies for lending operations management and technology services for micro lending. So here, Dhanlakshmi Bank is the client. Now, in this partnership, Dhanlakshmi Bank 
and this new street technologies which is a fintech company both of them are collaborating this company is going to provide a platform or services to the dhanlakshmi bank so that it can manage its lending operations at the same time technology uh, can in advance its technology so these are the two benefits that that this bank could reap out of this part okay apart from this this new street technologies will provide the technical support on digital onboarding and serve as a business correspondent in micro lending. That is also a play a role that this organization is going to play. Moving ahead, RBI has announced to bring the credit information companies under the embed of Reserve Bank Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. When will this initiative be applicable? So it will be applicable from September 1st, 2020. So, from now onwards, the grievances of the customer of the credit information companies will now be heard through the ombudsman, which is there for the banks, for the NBFCs. So this is the integrated ombudsman and now the services provided by the credit information companies will also be under the ombudsman. Okay, the services basically the grievances, if there is any grievance, of, by, of the customer, so that grievance will be resolved by the ombudsman. Now your task is to tell me that when did RBI merge its extent of uh, ombudsman schemes into this integrated ombudsman scheme? Do tell me in the comment section below. A very basic banking awareness question I have asked from you and I expect my students to answer this. Even if you don't want to write it in the comment section, do search the answer, okay? That is my ultimate motive that you know the answer of the questions that I ask additionally. Okay, so the next question is who has been appointed as the MD and CEO of Unity Small Finance Bank? So, Inverjit Kamotra is the right answer, he is the host. Who has become the first women director general of CSIR, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research? So, Ed Kalai is the right answer. Nala Kuzmi Kalai Salvi is the person. She is the one who has become the first woman director general of CSI. Now, the most important information is that she is an electrochemical engineer or scientist. Do remember her field because prior to this position, she was the director of CSI Central Electrochemical Research Institute in Tamil Nadu. The last question is who is the author of who? of how China sees India and the world book. So it is Sha Sar. And here guys, this video ends. I hope that you have liked the video. Thank you so much for watching it.